More than a month ago, some Minnesota children's headed back into the classrooms amid concerns about catching and spreading the coronavirus. So what have we learned about COVID and kids? And Heather, this was a very interesting, good question yeah. that you dug into because, mm -hmm. I mean, the truth is we're learning more every day. Absolutely. So this is like, what have we learned as of this moment? Right. right? And on Monday, Dr. Fauci said, look, I'm getting more optimistic that kids can go back to school. We just have to make sure that we do it safely. So you're starting to hear a lot of experts say, you know, maybe we're not seeing as much transmission among the little, little ones. Yeah. Um, so let's think about how we can figure out how to get that back, get them in the classroom. Because I think, you know, as, as both of us are in similar situations where right. we have school age kids, and, you know, we have seen, first of all, talk about what we're seeing when kids do test positive because it seems to line up with what we sort of expected, right? Right. So it was interesting. We spoke with a family who whose situation um, it was was very indicative of, of what you're seeing now. The parents got very sick, very sick for almost two weeks. The grandparents were both in the hospital, but the kids, three kids, teenagers, one had no symptoms, one had a cough and a headache for a day, and the other one, the only thing that happened is he lost his sense of taste and smell. And they so all tested positive? And they all tested positive. Yeah. And yeah. so what's interesting here is that or the the one who had no symptoms they lost the test but they assumed that he tested positive okay. but what's interesting here is you look at how that impacts all three kids differently and two of two of them were twins there too but what it does tell you and what doctors and experts have said is that we know that kids symptoms can be less severe right Mm -hmm. Right. And then the second thing that I think we as parents worry about is the spread and even non parents. Yes. If you're worried about teachers or worried about anybody, our kids kind of I think the worst case scenario is that people were worried that they were that kids would be these kind of asymptomatic spreaders. Mm -hmm. And right. that seems not to widely be the case. Right. And if you listen to uh, Dr. Mike Olsterholm says, you know, if you look at the kids under 10, their transmission rates aren't quite the same as what you would see in a teenager or in an adult. The teenagers can spread, they say, the virus just as well as an adult can yeah. spread the virus. I want to go back to something, though, Jason, that we just talked about. Those cases aren't as severe, but you can still get very, very sick as a child. I mean, we're talking we're talking about a little more than 1% of kids here in Minnesota have been hospitalized right. of the confirmed cases. We've also had 27 cases here in Minnesota of that multi-system inflammatory syndrome. Yeah. Um, so it, it is important. It does happen, to think right? About. Yes, right. It and is. this is, but this is similar. This is when people start to compare it to the flu. Right. And you say every once in a while, like a kid will get sick mm -hmm. and be hospitalized or even die right. from the flu. Mm -hmm. But that is not the overall. That's not what you're seeing overall. Anyway. Right. No, it's an interesting okay. story. Yeah. Super mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right.